You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present Lady Macduff by John Fryer with Holly Galanders. Mark Hill and Will O'Connor. How grey the sky doth seem to me today. The sun will not reveal himself. He doth but hide from our beloved country. He disdains our war that hath laid so many within their graves. That come the great judgment will rise and cover the earth begging for pity. Our land pierced and stabbed with the strength of mighty armies that do stalk and ravage the very peace that so many here died to achieve. How many wives have lost their husbands? How many husbands have returned home to have lost their wives? How many factions upon the harsh and barren land have taken up the sword in one rightful cause best known to themselves? When men do draw their blades, the drum doth sound and the flags do flutter upon the castle walls, the people do cheer for what they do not see or behold. But as the days turn to months and the graves are dug, the tears do flow, and all the hours are long and heavy. Do men but know of those they leave behind, and the empty passing days in which, for want of news, we may imagine all the horrors of the world visited upon this land by those that followed the flute, the pipes, and the beating drum. We each must follow our own path, to which end we know not. We women do not hold a blade or follow our captain's orders, and yet we shall live with this conflict long after the final body has been burnt, the final traitor executed. Men may honour themselves with titles and call each other brother, but it is we that stay behind that must live a different life and fight a different war. It is upon the hour, my lady. My husband, it is so soon, sir, that you cannot wait another day. I have tarried as long as this day will allow. The King's army will be all but assembled, our lines for combat drawn up and prepared. For my own commission, another will be chosen if I do not take my honoured place. There are never so few to step into the positions of rank if it were offered to them, which I shall not allow. Such times, my lord, are but a game to you, with little thought to those thou leave behind. Yeah, never was such a thing true. Thou shalt be forever in the centre of my heart. From sunrise till it do drop beneath the hill, it is only you and our precious pretty ones that I shall think of at all times. Thou mayst only see that now. Thou shall never be out of my thoughts. For the duty we must perform for the king is but a duty, never a pleasure. Nothing in this world would ever make me willingly leave the contentment that here I have with thee. Thou, in the heat of battle, may forget those that here you leave. <laughs> never. For the castle of Macduff carries my name and my family. You, our children, shall be therefore within my mind every time my eyes do close. I shall hear thy voice even as the rebel's blade doth strike upon my neck. Pray, my lord, that in the heat of the battle thou shalt not think of us safely here behind the castle walls. Thou must face such conflict with fortitude and courage and take actions to parry such blows upon the battlefield. Hey, forgive me, my lord, that I should entreat upon thy duty to our king when thou must face his enemies. Do not think of me, or the children, only your own safety thou from this day hence must you now concentrate upon. Draw your blade, strike true, present thy shield to all attacks, charge your horse at all foes and prevail against those that seek to destroy all that you possess. My lady, I will, and fear not, for there is no quicker assault in all of Scotland. The Thane of Cawdor believes his knife edge is sharp and keen. If thou shalt meet him on the field of battle, Yes? Show the noble Thane that thy blade cuts more swiftly through the grain light than his. <laughs> In such dim light he shall not see my blade. Well, that he does not, dear husband. I shall return to hold thee in my arms once more. Fear not. King Duncan doth possess a mighty force that the Norwegian lord cannot hope to match upon any field of slaughter. I know that peace shall once again be known across this land. 
my thane of Fife. The horses are now assembled. The time now has arrived. I will be with thee. My lord, we wait upon you. And so, my lady, I... I must now leave to rejoin the king's encampment. I will send thee word when the hour permits it, and there is news to tell. Till then, keep hope within thy heart, and watch to see the rising sun, whose sky shall once again be bright and show the heavens to this world. I shall wait upon thy return. Would it be but tomorrow? Soon, my lady. Soon. Such games as men do play. They think that only those who wear the apparel of the soldier do battle throughout this country. If not with axe, spear, cudgel or dagger, they do not see what other weapons may be deployed. Cunning, in all of its forms, may misdirect any army. A word with the slightest of nods may lead a noble to believe what was never true. A smile may send a handsome soldier to his death. Great castles, lords and titles are only such baubles as may be secured when the fighting is but over and the field is cleared of bodies. New kings and queens may rise above the carnage. No allegiance to a fallen crown will save a woman or her children if the new throne believes thou never loved them or aided in their quest. My husband fights for Duncan. Duncan may yet live and win and be victorious within the campaign that is set. But so may those from across the sea. The Thane of Cawdor, upon his honour, seems to believe it also. For the sake of my home, my children and myself, I may also believe it. Be it that my husband draws his sword and enters the fray, he may not return. So I shall continue to defend all I have and be friend to Duncan and the Norwegian Lord. Kodor must know of such a force that is now set against him. Word must be sent, and I must send it. Great Thane of Ross, you honour our humble home. Such times as we now find ourselves give little consideration for leisure, and we must welcome what guests we can. Lady Macduff. Such joy I feel upon finding you safely bestowed within the sturdy castle my simple voice may not express. Your home has always been a welcoming sight to the humble traveller. My duty to our king demands that I may stay but a short time. The war, God's will be done, will be brought to a satisfactory conclusion. The righteous, victorious, peace restored to all. Your words bring comfort to my soul. Please, sir, will you not join me in a cup of wine? My friends, I thank you for your attendance, but now I must perform the role of host, and for that, no other company I will need. May we be heard. The walls are strong and thick. Worry not about our speech. Not even Duncan will hear us in this hall. <sighs> Upon this hour, I must be away. The army has gathered and will soon take up stations for the attack. Then, by the rising of the dawn, a new king will sit upon the throne of this country. If the day should go as we require of it. What say our friends from the south? A man I know travels often between the lands of England and Scotland. Doth he speak for the English crown? This I have told you before. Thou hast told me little. I have told thee enough. Will the English come? What saith King Edward? If they do cross the border, Duncan will need to view his kingdom both forward and back. The Norwegian lord will hold off his advance if advantage would be gained by delay. The rebellious Thane of Cordor will position his host upon the west, with Norway in the north and Edward of England to the south. Duncan cannot fight on three sides. Will the English join us in this crusade? The English are assembling, but they are not ready. Norway and those of Ireland moved too fast, and the Thane of Cawdor declared himself before all the world when Duncan was still strong and made himself a rebel. They feared, if waited, they had that you planned to put your own husband on the throne of Scotland. 
Fighting for a prince other than that of Norway or Ireland was not, my dearest lady, the end they would accept. And for that, sir, two great armies face upon the field an uncertain future. My noble friend, can you urge the Norwegian lord to return to those castles that presently he commands, wait out the winter and steal himself for the campaign within the new year? My lady, upon my honour, he will not do it. All the cold wind of Scotland will not cool his temperature. His blood runs hot and thick and will not be satisfied until either the crown sits upon his head or his head views the land from Duncan's castle gate affixed fixed a pole. I cannot sway him. His mind is set upon its course. Then you must win the battle, or we must find another way. So early, friend, that thou was not presently about thy duty? Aye, my good lord. The day is broken as the sun doth rise, and we wait to see what heaven sends. One hopes the day shall bear well for us all here within the castle of the Thane of Fife. Newly as it is, has the noble lord yet risen? He is not here, sir. He left to attend the wars. Our king doth fight to save the kingdom stands upon the edge of some mighty cliff, ready to stumble and fall. Perhaps thy king will be successful. Is he not bestowed with loyal captains and officers of rank? Are his soldiers not armed themselves with swords and courage? Aye, that they are, sir. But so doth the enemy. Only one may carry the day. True, my friend, for the sun doth rise and shine across this fair land. Those that lie tonight within the soil will not fear. Doth the lady of the house yet stir? Stir? I think she has not yet retired. Praying all night, no doubt, for the fate of her husband. I do not doubt that. Please, friend, escort me to her. I have much need. Good Sir Richard, come, warm thyself. The night has been cold, but here you shall always be welcome. My lady, Thou art the most generous of hosts. I will partake of the heat of your fire. My bones are cold. The early morning winds hath cut through my cloak. Here, sit and warm yourself. Many thanks. Battle has been joined. We have heard of the positioning of two mighty armies. The victory is not certain. Duncan should prove the stronger. Then thou shall still be safe. Thy husband knows nothing of our discussion. But Cawdor hath known it all from the beginning. If he should be taken alive, what then for the safety of this house? Thy husband would plead for your deliverance. My husband is a man loyal to his king, not his wife, not his children. He is the Thane of Fife. He cannot refuse his monarch when called to serve. To have denied your king would bring suspicion upon your house, not saved it. And what, Sir Richard, has drawn you here to Fife on this cold morning? Thou hast not travelled here for the simple pleasure of the flickering flames. A force of strong-hearted knights and men of war, even now under the command of mighty Seward, is currently being assembled south of the border. But this I did but know before. Where is this army? Where do I spy their banners and flags upon the horizon? The battle has commenced, and where are the English to aid the cause? Thou hast spoken of equality between our lands, a peace forged through the evils of combat. But when the time has come, the English drum doth not sound the call to action. Scottish blood is spilt upon the ground, while your countrymen do but fill their cups with wine. Gentle lady, the forces I have spoken of do but answer the call. But the Norwegian lord hath not heeded our request to hold his formations until such a time when we too could bring our force of arms to their best practice. 
if Duncan should thrive, Cordor will fail and die.